What I've asked you to integrate for the first one is 2x squared dx. 2x squared dx. Now, you can see the two things that happened here. Um, the power, I should say the index, was increased. right? So Strain wrote our 3 here. And what happens to that 3? What do we do with it immediately? Yeah, we, we divide by that, right? Uh, where would this 2 come from? Where's the 2 from? The, the 2 was already there, just like with differentiation. Since integration is the reverse of that, um, that 2 at the front kind of we can put to one side. That coefficient, we can just sort of disregard it briefly and then put it back when we're done. Um, last step, and we've done this for all of them, but plus C, what do we call that again? It's got a special name. It's the constant of integration, because that's what we're dealing with here. And it always needs to appear. Okay, As soon as you do the integration, it doesn't appear like on the very last line after I've simplified and cleaned up everything. It appears right away. Okay, Looking good for A. Part B. Now, this was a bit sneaky, because I threw a different pro numeral at you. I threw you an A instead of an X. But you know, we've been dealing with functions for like years now. That They don't have to have X's in them. They can have any letter we like. They just kind of stand there as a well, they're a pro numeral to put in place of some numbers. So when we have a look at this, 1 sixth outside of the 3a minus 1 squared, who wrote their answer exactly like that? Hands up. Two? <laughs> OK, so I'm interested. Thank you, hands down. Most of you, most of you did not report a problem with this, but most of you also didn't raise your hand and say you wrote your answer like that. So how did you write your answer? Anyone want to throw us their idea? Go ahead, Will. Bracket 3a minus 1 squared over 6 plus c. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, did anyone write their answer like this? Is this answer the same or is it different? It's the same. It's the same, yeah. We've just written the 6 a different spot. Um, very few people put up their hand for that one. Who wrote their answer another way still? Um, 3 over 2 times a squared uh, minus 1a plus c. I'm just going to write A, is that okay? Yep. Well, C. Who wrote their answer like that? Okay, a few more hands. This seemed like the most common one. Yeah, no, or a slight difference? Uh, 3A squared on 2. Yep, okay, which is, matches how you did this. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask the question again. Uh, is this different or is it the same? Hmm. Now, it's a bit tricky because it's not immediately apparent. You have to kind of expand this to see. Can we just quickly check this? 3a squared uh, is going to be 9a squared. So I should say 3a all squared. That's 9a squared. What's the next term when I expand? Minus. Minus. I'm just expanding this thing here. It's, it's double the product in the middle, right? Yep. So that's minus 6a. Are you okay with that? And then the last term along? Plus one. plus 1. Okay, now when you have a look at it, this whole thing we're saying is divided by 6 and then you plus c. Now, do they look the same? Yeah. You happy with that? Okay. Is one, I mean, I've got one, two, three, four answers on the board. Is one of them better than any of the others? I'd say they roughly all look pretty equivalent to me. Um, personally, um, when I was writing my own solutions to this, I, I wrote this one. Um, reason being, I said, well, look, I can go term by term. I can go term by term, and I can integrate each one one at a time. Um, and that was the least brain space in my head. Um, we have a name for this approach here, these two, right? Um, but we'll come to that in a second in case you can't remember it, because a lot of you went the other way. All right, lots of you raised your hands for C. And admittedly, it was a bit rude of me to throw this curveball right in the middle. What does integration mean? What idea have we connected it to? Integration is the opposite of differentiation, right? So when we ask, you know, can you integrate this, right? What we're asking is, can you give me that function which if you differentiate this, you'll end there. Does that make sense? If you differentiate this thing, if we've done it right, we should end at whatever that function is. By the way, um, that function being integrated, it has a name when you see something like this. Rather than calling it the function that keeps being integrated, you can call it its technical name if you like, which is an integrand. But honestly, it's quite uncommon. So very few people know it. Even very few textbooks actually say it. But I'm going to say it now because we keep on referring to it. If I differentiate this, if I've got this right, I should get to that integrand. Does that make sense? 
it does take a bit of memory because we haven't been in exponential and log land, but we're going to fix that in about an hour. Um, to remember that the derivative of the natural log, that's really important by the way, the natural log, so it has to have a base of e, will take you to 1 over, in this case, y, or 1 over x, or 1 over t, or whatever you have. Okay, and for this last one, I'm actually going to hit pause on it. We will come back to it shortly. So, if you haven't already, can you please make this heading? There is a conspicuous blank space here, which we will fill shortly. And um, what I wanted to remind all of you, and we've already sort of looked at it in these starter questions, is everything that we know, at least so far and for a decent chunk of time, everything we know about integration is going to be built off, it's going to be hung off what we know about differentiation. Does that make sense? So we've already established this rule. I just wanted to see if you remember it. I need my colors for this bit. Um, orange. <clears throat> Since we know that when you differentiate a power, right, we do these two things. Number one, we, uh, we differentiate by bringing that index out the front. And then what's the second thing we do? We, we, we subtract one from the index. We reduce the index by one. Okay? So there are these two acts here. Therefore, we can say that the opposite of that, to undo that, we undo both of these two actions, right? So since the most, the last thing that we did was we uh, reduced the index by one, what's the first thing we should do here? We should, we should do the opposite, which is increase the index. Does that make sense? You see that corresponds, that action there? Then the other thing we had to undo was we multiplied by this index. Well, what should I do to undo that? I should divide. Uh, and I should divide by this new index, right? You happy with that? And plus one in this case. So I hope, and if you've got colors there, this will really help. I want you to see each of those things undoes a specific thing. There you go. Um, and then our last step, which we've already seen a bunch of times, we have to add uh, the constant of integration. And can you remind me what's the reason for that? It's not just random, it's... Mm -hmm. Okay, so, whoopsie daisy, flying Wapa Waka. Let's say that again. So, uh, I'm going to put both those answers together. Perfect. If we had a plus five, or a plus two, or a minus, you know, a thousand, ten thousand, whatever, right? All that does is it moves the function up and down, right? Which doesn't change the gradient, which is what this is really in, uh, in reverse asking, okay? So, all of these guys would differentiate to give us that integrand, okay?